Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and I have several clips for you today. The first one is with Judge Rosie Speedland Gonzalez down in Texas, and she's got a defendant who gives her attitude, and she gives it right back. The thing is, she wins. Uh, the next one is with Judge Devin Collier down in Florida. Actually, he's got two. I don't want to say much about them. The um, third one is, or the third judge, is with Judge Wade Mercer. He's got a defendant that just can't stop talking, and Judge Mercer doesn't have the patience for it. The next one is with Judge Brian Kirkham, and it's an ugly divorce. <laughs> You'll see. And then the last one is with Judge Boyd. And I can't really say a whole lot about that one, but I am going to cut in before it just to explain it so you'll understand what's going on. Here's the clips. Okay, Mr. Benia, let's go ahead and get on the record. Olga in 616114 in the matter of the state of Texas versus Brian Christian Ledesma. Mr. Ledesma, you're on live. Can you hear us? I yes, ma'am. I mean, somewhat. And have you given your attorney, Mr. Larry Meadows, in this court permission to go forward with this proceeding via video conference, also known as the Zoom app? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much, sir. Please stand by. Can I get announcements from the attorneys and from probation on the record? Rick Pena for the state of Texas. Larry Meadows for the defendant. Marie Martinez for probation. Now, um, Mr. Ledesma, I do need to swear you in. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth under penalty of perjury? Should you make a false statement or lie to the court? Yes, ma'am. You may put your hand down, Mr. Ledesma. Mr. Ledesma, on the 21st of January of 2020, two months before COVID even hit, we might have started to hear about COVID on the West Coast, Seattle, L.A., but it hadn't reached San Antonio yet. On that, on the 21st of January, 2020, you submitted a request, an application for community supervision, for probation, for the offense that you were charged with, which was a terroristic threat alleged to have been committed on or about the 31st day of May. Of 2019. The court granted your application for probation with the understanding that you were going to follow the court order issued on that day and that you were going to be compliant with all of your conditions of probation. On the 21st of January of 2020, the court admonished you, Mr. Ledesma, warned you that if you were to return before this court, as you are now, because the state filed a motion to revoke your probation alleging that you had violated the court's orders and were not being compliant with your conditions of probation, and that after a hearing, like we're in now, during which the court hears from the state, from you, from probation, and from your attorney, And that, after, at the, and that at the end of that hearing, if, if the court determines that you have indeed violated your conditions of probation and the court order, that you could face the full range of punishment. And I informed you on the 21st of January of 2020 of the following, that the range of punishment for the terroristic threat can be up to one year of incarceration at the Bear County Jail. And in addition to jail time, the court could fine you up to $4,000 and that you could, you could lose your Second Amendment constitutional right to bear firearms, have guns, and handle ammunition. So, Mr. Ledesma, here we are at this hearing, and I'm about to hear evidence. So do you understand why you're here today? Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And do you understand the possible outcome of this hearing? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much, Mr. Ledesma. Please stand by. Mr. Benny, as the prosecutor for Bear County and the attorney for the state of Texas, why are we here today? Your Honor, we are here on a motion to revoke 
the defendant's probation. Uh, we are alleging that the defendant has violated the following conditions. Uh, condition number five, that the defendant failed to report to probation for the months of November 2022, January 2023, and February 2023. We are also alleging a violation of condition number 16, Your Honor, that the defendant failed to provide proof of enrollment and or completion of a high school diploma or a GED program. And lastly, Your Honor, we're, we're alleging violation of condition number 20, which is that the defendant failed to complete a TAP evaluation. Before I ask uh, whether it's true or not true, Mr. Ledesma, did you ever complete a GED program or high school equivalency program? Ma'am, I paid $300 to try to get my that GED. Wasn't my, that wasn't yes, my question. Yes, ma'am, I did. Yes, ma'am, I okay. did. Do you have proof of that? I could get it if I, if you would give me a chance. You've been on probation since 2020. Um, 21, 22, 23. Over four years, Mr. Ledesma. And um, you're, say, you're saying to this court that you want a chance in, four years into this to show proof that you've complied? Man, my struggle. Uh, I, I am you struggled that. for four years to bring that piece of paper to your probation officer? Yes, yes, yes ma'am, I did. Your Honor. Hold on, Ms. Officer Martinez, hold on. Did you ever submit to the TAP evaluation, Mr. Ledesma? I did that while I was in the county last time, ma'am. Okay. All right. Your I, Honor. I, hold on, Officer Martinez. <laughs> Raise your right hand, Mr. Ledesma. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under penalty of perjury, should you make a false statement or lie to this court? Yes, ma'am. Put your hand down, Mr. Ledesma. In regard to condition number five, it is alleged that you failed to report as court ordered to your probation officer for the month of November of 2022. January of 2023 and February of 2023. Mr. Ledesma, is that true or not true? True, ma'am. Mr. Ledesma, it is alleged by the state of Texas that you failed to comply with condition number 16. And the allegation is that you failed to provide proof of enrollment and, and or completion proof to your probation officer of a high school or GED program completion. Is that true or not true, Mr. Ledesma? And last, Mr. Ledesma, the state is alleging that you failed to comply with the TAP evaluation as court ordered on January 21st of 2020. Is that true or not true? Ma'am, how am I supposed to answer with a true or not true if I, I thought I did the type of evaluation here, you know? I've got enough. He doesn't have to answer 20 if he doesn't want to. Okay, it's true, ma'am. It's true. Okay. okay. I gave you an out, but you say it's true now. We have a true plea from the defendant for violation of condition number five as pled by the state. We have a true plea by the defendant for violation of condition number 16 as pled by the state. And we have a, a true plea for violation of condition number 20, a true plea from the defendant for violation of condition number 20, failing to submit to a TAP evaluation. Mr. Pena, what is the state seeking today? Your Honor, state is seeking a revocation. Officer Martinez, the court will hear from you now. If you could give the court um, a brief summary of, well, first of all, give the court a recommendation on the state's motion from probation. And if you could give the court a brief summary of his overall compliance uh, with the court's orders. Your Honor, I have to correct the record. I mistakenly sent the state 
his previous MTR, and then I resent the current MTR. And I think Mr. Pena read uh, violations from both MTRs. Can I just inform you that the violations on the current MTR are condition number two, failure to submit a UA on June 9th of 2023. Condition number five, failure to report for the month of July of 2023. Condition number 14, failure to complete 24 hours of community service. And condition number 16, failure to provide proof of enrollment in GED. He did complete the TAP during his last MTR while he was in jail. At that time, probation was recommending revocation because he refused to be screened for DDRF. He refused to comply with the TAP. So you reset the hearing and he did the TAP. The TAP evaluation um, recommended DDRF. He again refused to go to DDRF. So probation recommended revocation. Um, Mr. Ledesma was very confrontational. He was argumentative and stated that he had done prison time. He wasn't worried about this misdemeanor case. He stated he had an abusive childhood. After hearing all of those arguments, your honor denied the MTR and you asked probation to continue him for another year. We did so. And he again, failed to report, was disruptive in his court, in his office setting. He failed to comply with community service hours. He constantly gives the excuse that he's been through so much in his life and he's not worried about this misdemeanor case. He's been very difficult to work with. Um, he provides dilute UAs or just does not report for UAs, period. He did complete BIP while on probation at the very beginning of his case in 2021. He did pay $606 towards his fines and fees and he has done 50 days in jail. But because of his history and because of his noncompliance and because probation has gone above and beyond and your honor, you have gone above and beyond and given him more than enough chances. Probation is adamantly recommending revocation. Mr. Ledesma. I'm looking at the updated motion and report motion from the state and report from probation. Is it true or not true that you failed to submit to drug testing on the 9th of June of 2023? It's true. Mr. Ledesma, is it true or not true that you failed to report to your probation officer in July of 2023 in violation of condition number five? Mr. Ledesma, is that true or not true? It's true, Your Honor. And last, Mr. Ledesma, is it true or not true that you failed to complete 24 hours of community service in, in violation of condition number 14. It's true, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Meadows, I will hear from you next. Your Honor, I don't have any evidence um, other than I have some argument, but we're just putting the question of punishment to the court. Okay. I think if any defense attorney or anyone that has gone through this court on a motion to revoke probation were to be asked if this court was fair to them and gave them credit for the work that they did on probation, this court has 100% always given individuals credit. When it appears to the court that they have learned from those services. I have no reason to doubt Officer Martinez's representation that Mr. Ledesma took the BIP course early on in his probation. I'm going to assume sometime in 2020. But despite the completion of that course, his behavior did not change, which tells the court that the, that the class was ineffective. This court has always given credit for BIP. Uh, this is not the um, no kid left behind program. This is not the no inmate left in jail program. We're not just going to give you credit for credit's sake, Mr. Ledesma. We've been showing you grace all along. And you have thrown those opportunities away. You have expressed criminal thinking that gives this court pause 
and reason to believe that you will be a continued menace to our community and to yourself, honestly. And until you come to the realization that you need treatment, mental health treatment, your life will not improve. You will not be happy with yourself or others. The court is going to accept Mr. Ledesma's true plea for violation of condition number two as pled by the state. For violation of condition number five as pled by the state. For violation of condition number 14 as pled by the state. For violation of condition number five as pled by the state and violation number 16 as pled by the state. The court is granting the state's motion to revoke and adjudicate Mr. Ledesma guilty of the terroristic threat alleged to have occurred on or about the 31st day of May of 2019 in case number 616114. The court is sentencing Mr. Ledesma to 300 days at the Bear County Jail, not 365 days, which my emotions would tell me to do. But I cannot let my personal feelings or anger impact me giving you credit for doing that BIP course. I'm not giving you the credit I usually do because of your behavior and lack of acknowledgement of that, Mr. Ledesma that the bib course did not work. Your self-righteous attitude in today's hearing and your disrespect for the process is not well taken by this court. The fine will be $2,000 plus court costs. The court is issuing the affirmative finding of family violence. That finding will be issued immediately following this proceeding by way of a court order that's going to prohibit Mr. Ledesma from possessing, purchasing, owning, or using a firearm, a gun, and ammunition. Mr. Ledesma, do you own or have access to any firearms, guns, or ammunition? No, ma'am. Upon your release from custody, you will be prohibited by this order from staying anywhere, living anywhere, or visiting any location where firearms, guns, or ammunition can be found. Upon release from custody, Mr. Ledesma, you will be prohibited by this order from being a passenger or a driver in any motor vehicle in which firearms, guns, or ammunition can be found. And last, Mr. Ledesma, upon your release from custody, you can hunt all day long till the cows come home, but you cannot hunt with the firearm, a gun, or using ammunition. That is the affirmative finding of family violence and the order that will be issued with today's uh, revocation order. The court will give you credit for the time you've served. That is 50 days. Your time and mon money will run concurrent. That is the court order. Good luck to you, Mr. Ledesma. I sure do hope that you see things in a different way when you're finally, eventually released from custody from the Bear County Jail. Everyone is excused. I'm gonna go do his paperwork and I'll be back for the next proceeding. Uh, thank you, Judge. <laughs> yeah, I know y'all railroad me. Everybody's uh, feeling better. Uh, I don't, I'm not contagious, this is just- uh, yes, sir. I believe Mr. Rice on the trial docket. He is, Your Honor. I think we have two issues going on. Uh, first of all, I think the state's going to need to ask for a continuance of the trial okay. because we got an email that uh, the FDLA agent would not be available. Is that correct? That's, that's uh, correct. Okay. That's the, um, the, the <clears throat> two cases that oldest cases, Judge, that um, Mr. Wilson, I've always um, been focused on, Your Honor. Um, the um, physical lab judge um, is um, unavailable. Uh, when they called in, uh, we did subpoena them, judge. Um, they called in um, that they had sent their unavailability uh, notices, and I just informed them, you know, we would um, 
file our, our, our motions to continue, Judge. Um, I, we did ask if there was another analyst or, you know, that could perform it to try to keep the uh, cases going, Judge, and it is my understanding, um, and I know from the um, email that we got, I believe the in, entire chemistry section is, is unavailable. Okay. Judge. All right, Mr. Wilson, any objection? And Your Honor, if they're not available, there's not really much okay. we can do. All right, Mr. Wright, we'll move your, and what's the second thing before? Uh, you raised the second thing, Your Honor. There was a problem with, uh, that occurred while Mr. Wright was oh, on release. Yes, Mr. Wright, what's going on? You, you were on release, and um, while you were released, you tested positive for some cocaine. You, you told me you weren't smoking crack, but your friends were, and you were just in their vicinity. And I've, I've never heard. Let me bring some proof of that. Yeah, what do you have? I'll take a look at it. Proof of what? What, what are you? I, yeah, no, I haven't had a chance to look. Okay. I think it's. I'll just pass it to the court. I believe it's some Google research. Yeah. Google research. Well, some of it is being uh, diagnostic takes over by Goodwill. The first, the first thing I have says Google search cocaine being absorbed through the skin and fell and pee tests. I'm probably certain if you, you're touching cocaine, it's probably going to be absorbed. It explains the second page is some links. Um, P-U-B-M-E-D. The other one is www.police1.com. Explains why officers use the wear of PPE and drug bus. Cocaine can get in your system if handled or touched. True. And transfer out of mouth. And this talks about from Oxford Academy on the dermal absorption of cocaine. The, the dermal is the skin. A five milligram dose of cocaine freebase. I'm not sure what freebase is. I've heard it in songs, but I'm not sure. Applied to the volar foreskin, forearm skin, resulted in a positive UA. That's not what you told me. You didn't, you didn't tell me that you touched it. You said some, one of your friends was smoking crack cocaine and you were just by him and it somehow got in your system. Mr. Wright, I'm going to. Uh, Go ahead. Who's making contact with Judge Shaw? What you mean by that? Hand touching. Okay. Mr. Wright, I'm going to revoke your bond, sir, for violating terms of my release conditions by testing positive for cocaine. So you're going to be placed back in the Gulf County Jail, and we'll see you on March 6th at 1.30. Uh, take a look at yourself, sir. I'll take a look at that. Maybe it'll change my mind. Uh, is this your proof of your appointment? Is that what you're telling Thank you, Mr. Wilson. That's Department of Veterans Affairs. You're a veteran, Mr. Wright? Yes. So you have an appointment to meet with a nurse. I know on the 29th, I ain't got paperwork on that one yet. Yes, sir. I know, um, Mr. Wright, I, I know, but I can't overlook the fact that last year he had concerns about medical conditions and I agreed with you and let you out and told you to check in for UAs and within a few weeks, maybe even a week of you getting out of jail, you, you test positive for cocaine. So I've, I've continued the hearings until today, but I'm going to revoke your bond, sir. You'll be held without bond and I'll see you on March 6th at 1.30. And since you are a veteran, I'm not sure the nature of the charges, but if we need to talk about veterans court, if he's eligible, we can talk about that. Uh, I'll speak with Ms. Smith about that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know his background score sheet or what, but it looks like some drug charges. He's tested positive for cocaine and um, maybe that's yeah. something that we can look into. Yes, sir. Oh, no, you, you did. Um, everything I read, though, um, was that you, have, you actually have to have physical contact with it. We talked about the dermal or the dermis, which is the skin and touching. And I agree, if you touch cocaine or handle cocaine, it was gonna be in your system. But that's not what you told me. You told me your friend was smoking crack cocaine and you was just there with him. 
and somehow it got into your system. You never said that you touched them. Well, you didn't ask me. I mean, yes, I told you I got in the with me if you asked me about it. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Mr. Wright, you tested positive for cocaine, sir. All right, that violates my conditions of release, so I'm going to put you back in jail, and I'll see you March 6th. Mr. Borsi. Are you ready Okay, this will be just a very. You know, this is a bond motion I filed on behalf of my client, Mr. Mor Travis Morrison. Okay. All right. Um, any witnesses other than your client? No, you're. All right, Mr. Morrison, you raise your right hand for us. Okay. All right, Mr. Morrison, I'm just going to ask you a few basic questions. How old are you? 23. Okay. Um, prior to this incident, were you employed? No. Okay. How how did how you get along? How are you living? How are you paying your bills? I was employed prior months to the situation that led me here, and uh, I was trying to file for unemployment from the last place I currently work, which I didn't get through to do. Where were you living? I was living in. Uh, I was back and forth from Zones Homestead to Wee Wall, so St. Joe to Wee Wall. But I didn't have a prior residence. Let me rephrase that question. Were you living with someone? Yeah. Who? My grandfather. Your grandfather. If you were to uh, be able to post bond or the judge was to let you out, will your grandfather let you come back? Mm -hmm. What's that address? 186 Palm Breeze Road. Okay. And is that, is that lo fairly local? It's, it's local. It's right by the hospital. Okay. Now, um, where are you from? I'm from here. Have you lived here your whole life? I've lived here my whole life. I was born in Brunswick, Georgia, but I came here about five minutes later. Okay. All right. So you you grew up in this area, go to high school in this area, have friends and family in this area. All right. Um, now, as far as this incident goes, I don't want to get it too much into the facts, but once you found out that you were, uh, they were looking for you about this. Uh, did you turn yourself in? Yes, sir. Okay, and you did you cooperate with the police? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, and if the judge was to lower your bond or to let you out on pretrial release, can you? Uh, do you have a way to get here? Yes, sir. My grandfather will take me back and forth. Okay. And he's a veteran, very law-abiding citizen, and make sure I'm here. All right. All right. Uh, nothing further, Your Honor. Okay, Miss Smith. Same question. Actually, I, I did have one more. Have okay. you? Have you been in trouble with the law before uh, as an adult? Um, one prior time when I was 18, I got caught with marijuana. Okay. Did you uh, did, did you have to come to court? Did you appear, appear I didn't have to come to court. They dropped everything and gave me time, sir. Okay. So you've never failed to appear for a court here. Okay. All right. Just a very brief yes, uh, argument. You've heard most of it, Your Honor. And I understand these charges on their face are very serious, but there's... Um, there's more, and I'm not going to get into it. There's more that meets the eye here. And as you heard, my client turned himself in. And uh, again, if you were to really read the police report, what he told the officers happened. They, they felt that he was being uh, honest and forthright with them. So he's never tried to cover up what happened in this situation. Um, so, and as far as him being a, a flight risk, he, turn himself in so uh and and the facts of this he's not a danger to the community uh, he doesn't have a criminal history and in fact this incident was a personal between him and the victim so he doesn't represent a danger at large your honor I, I, we don't want to get into that kind of stuff all right miss smith judge i would argue that under the, the facts and circumstances that of the case that the bond um, that was set in this case is is appropriate in this matter, uh, Your Honor. Um, this this case involves um, uh, a handgun, Your Honor, um, mask. Um, the I believe the, the firearm was was actually um, discharged, Judge. Um, and I'm trying to find something in the report, Judge, but I do believe that. Um, Lieutenant Farrell with the Sheriff's Office um, had contact um, while they were investigating this uh, this case um, with, with the defendant. And it wasn't until later, uh, Your Honor, uh, that um, that he was at the Sheriff's Department and uh, 
and they've been told a different story, Judge. But I would argue that the seriousness of the of the charges, Your Honor, this is a uh, first degree felony possibility of life case that the bond that was set is appropriate. For anything else, Mr. Morrison? I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, I would just clarify it. Although the weapon was discharged it, in the report, it's clear that it was uh, it wasn't an intentional discharge. It was an accidental discharge um, during what appears to be a struggle. I don't think anyone has ever alleged that my client fired a weapon at someone because then we'd be in a totally different posture. Absolutely. Mr. Morrison, based on the, the charges, it is a first degree punishment by life and under Florida law is considered a dangerous crime. So I'm going to deny your motion for a bond reduction. This is, let's see, filed this in October. Excuse me, December happened in October. As far as the um, discovery, where are we at in that process? I believe I have most of the discovery. I'm, I mean, I've already reached out um, to the state and we're trying to begin some opening negotiations. Uh, and I'll, I'll get depositions set right away if, if the negotiations fall through, but we're we're making good progress. Mr. Morrison, you okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're just staring at me. I'll make, I'm make sure you're fine. Me. Okay. I'm fine. All right, but well, we'll see you March 6th at 1.30. And I think that concludes my business. Right? Thank you, Mr. Wilson. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. So we've got James Levins. Yes, I'm going to get him one time. Thank you. Great. Mr. Levins and Mr. Diller, this is Wade Mercer, the county judge in Jackson County, doing first appearances today. On, on the phone also, we have Ms. Elizabeth Simpson. She's your attorney for today's purposes. Uh, and we have the prosecutor, Ms. Bremer. Mr. Levins, you have some charges out of Jackson County. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, first appear you and set you a bond since there are charges here. That's where normally I'm at is Jackson County. Mr. Levins, you're accused of uh, one count of robbery. There is probable cause for these charges. The robbery bond is going to be $50,000 because you just got out of the Department of Corrections. You're accused of felony battery. The felony battery charge will be $10,000. False imprisonment, that bond will be $10,000. You're accused of violation of an injunction for protection. That bond will be $5,000. Mr. Levins, your total bond out of Jackson County is $75,000 cash or surety. Mr. Levins, you have the right to post the bond. It has a condition of no contact with the alleged victim, though. So you can have no contact with the alleged victim at all. Um, you'll get to use the phone, sir, and try to go through a uh, post a bond. If you want to go through a bond, then that's up to you. If you're not able to post the bond, Mr. Levins, you'll be transported to uh, Jackson County, and we will see you in the near future if you're not able to post the bond. Uh, if you post the bond, then you'll see Judge Garcia at a court date eventually. But if you do post a bond, make sure you have no contact with the alleged victim that's accused you of this. Mr. Levins, do you have any questions? Yes, I do. Well, I need to talk to an investigator because I was cut. But ain't nobody come talk to me. They just put charges on me. Okay. I ain't robbed nobody. And where the robbery charge come from? Well, the, I did violate my don't, 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 don't say anything that you're, 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 you're being recorded. Don't say anything that's going to hurt you. And I, but I will try to answer your question. The robbery is allegedly taking the phone while all this other stuff was going on. That's, that's the supposed robbery. I didn't do that, but um, like the injunction, I ain't gonna lie about that. I violated that. I mean, she made contact me when I got out of prison. I'm not gonna lie about that. Well, that's I'm why I brought myself up here when they was talking about all this other fool and junk that I didn't like to do. All this junk is behind me and her little boyfriend got into it. And I'm the uh, one going to jail, but I got cut. Ain't nobody come talk to me. Well, what you should do on city. what you should do on that, since it's supposed to since it supposedly I happened in Jackson. Will you stop that. talking and listen to me, Mr. Levins? I'm trying to, Madam Jailer, his first appearance is over. I'm not going to listen to him any further. He needs to get it put out of the room. I'm not going to listen to him. He won't even let me talk. His first appearance is over. Have, have a good day, sir. Hello. 2023-2641-DM, Trisha Rice versus James Rice. Today is Monday, February 12, 2024 at 1.40 p.m. Court will note the appearance of Ms. Mandalay in this matter on behalf of the uh, plaintiff. This is set for a status conference uh, when we were back in court uh, 
on January 8, 2024, Mr. Buckland has stated he believed that they had settled this matter. And uh, we were a bit stymied at that point because the defendant didn't appear. Ms. Bendeley, enlighten me. Where are we at? Uh, yes, Your Honor. As the court noted, we had a scheduling conference on January 8th. Um, looks like Attorney Buckland had sent a judgment of divorce for review and signature to the parties on January 23rd. Um, there was some subsequent email correspondence with Mr. Rice, I believe on February 5th. Um, he had emailed essentially a counter proposal asking about a zero turn mower um, or a wedding ring, which was declined. Um, I, it's my understanding the parties have two mowers and Mr. Rice is getting one, my client was getting the other. Um, on Friday, it looks like Mr. Buckland got an email from Mr. Rice about the judgment of divorce. It seemed that they had an agreement um, with the judgment of divorce. Mr. Rice indicated effectively that it better be as uh, Mr. Buckland had explained um, and that he would be in to go over exact items. My client did sign that judgment of divorce um, electronically today. It's waiting on signature from Mr. Rice. Um, so at this point in time, um, it's really the only information I have. I'm not sure with Mr. Rice if he's planning on signing it um, or okay. not. Let me check. Uh, Mr. Rice, uh, do we have an agreement and a settlement in this matter? We can, but I want to make a giant statement first. Am I allowed a big statement? No, nope. this is a status conference. I'm just checking on what the status of the case is. Not a case to air any dirty laundry or make statements. Just a matter, do we have a settlement or do we not have a settlement? Fine, consider my signatures. Okay. So, did you have you received uh, from Mr. Buckland the judgment, sir? I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. I, I paid little attention to... I don't know. Just okay. consider signing. Okay, well, check your email and see if, uh, again, it's signed. I think this is the justice. She committed adultery. She... she okay, ordered, sir, I, sir, again, I don't need a statement. Sir, I don't need a statement, Okay. If, if you want to make a statement, go, go out in your backyard and yell at the wind, okay? Because at this point, I don't need to hear that. So, well, I will wait and see uh, if we do have uh, a resolution in this matter. If not, then the intent is... No will... child, I, I don't get any child support or nothing. She sold herself and, and sold out her family. But okay. whatever, I okay. signed. Consider the divorce signed. Okay. I'm not You're, I don't have enough gas money to drive over to sign the paper. Um, Your Honor, if, I, yes, if I'm in for Mr. Rice's email, um, to make sure we send it to the correct place. I don't know how to I don't know how to email. Oh, sir, I because I see that we have some correspondence with you um and our staff at jrice1126 at gmail. Is that the correct notice for you? That's correct, but I don't know how to e-sign anything. I would have signed it two weeks ago if I knew how to e-sign. Why, why don't you send a paper copy? He can sign that and then return it to you. I will do so, Your Honor. Thank okay. you. Okay, and then uh, get the uh, front of the court approval, and then we'll be able to, after the time runs, to be able to complete it. Thank you, Judge. Question, okay. Judge, Judge, yes. Judge, question. Yeah. yeah. If I can find a ride and sign that today, will it be signed? Well, you sign it off by Valentine's Day. Yeah, I will not because the time frame is not run yet to do that. It's a 180 day waiting period, and today is only 133 oh. days. So, by it's statute, hard. by statute, I can't sign it until after the 180 days. But. What we can do, Mr. Rice, is get that sent in, um, and that way, once the 108 days comes up, then Judge can sign it if it's on his desk before then. So we just need to make sure we get it to Judge at that time frame. She oh. lived here a year. Sir, it's 180 days from the date of filing, and that's statutory. I I can't change that. So. Mr. Rice, are you... I'm sorry, Judge. 
Um, are right. you at the Six Mile Road address still, Mr. Rice? Yes. Okay, thank okay. you, sir. We'll send that out and uh, get it done, Miss uh, Bendeley, if you would. When you do have that sign, let my office know, and then we won't have to schedule anything further. Certainly. Thank you, Judge. Okay, thank you. Court one, this matter at 1.45 p.m. You're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you as well. Now, this next clip comes from Judge Stephanie Boyd at the 187th District Court in Texas. And this is kind of an interesting look about some of the other things that go on behind the scenes that we don't really think about. But uh, this attorney is advocating very strongly for her client because he's charged with what you can see here. And when she talks about the co-defendant, the co-defendant took a plea back in August and they're waiting to sentence the co-defendant, who is also here. Um, but they're waiting to sentence the co-defendant until after this trial, because that was part of the plea that she has to testify. So that's what this is pretty much talking about, other than the YouTube thing. You know, I, I can understand that, but I don't can't I don't know why you can't just ask the jurors the potential jurors do you watch YouTube do you watch court on YouTube have you seen Judge Boyd did you see this trial anything about this trial and if they say no well then you can use them if they say yes then you you don't choose them I would think that would be a fairly easy fix or you know concern that she doesn't need to worry about but anyway uh, she's advocating strongly. She's She seems like she's a good attorney, but um, I sense a little bit of animosity there. Not so much from Judge Boyd's side. I see sternness, but not not animosity. But that that's just my take. It could just be her persona. So anyway, I'll let you guys watch. All right, we're going to go on the record. Court is calling 2022 CR4. Four eight a State of Texas versus Jose Angel Ruiz. Mr. Ruiz, if you come down, please. Could our parties announce for the record and counsel you on this side? If you could repeat that. Yes. No, uh, the deputies wanted it changed for security issues. And are you Mr. Ruiz? All right, we're here on a motion to unseal documents, motions, and orders that were sealed. State, have you had a chance to review the defense's motion? All right. So defense is asking for... Sure. All right, that's denied. All right, do you have, a, do you have an order? I mean, sorry, do you have a motion? I have a motion on the part. All no, right, do you have no, a no, motion that's been filed? Good. All right, so, State, do you have any objection to an oral motion? Um, I, it's been it's been heard. I, I believe there it has hasn't been heard. The motion to choose. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, this issue has been heard. I believe there was a written motion previously, but it was ruled on. Um. I, I don't have an objection to her re-urging her, her motion. All right, you can re-urge your motion. Yeah, Your Honor, it has never been heard. I asked to have you, Your Honor, I asked you to recuse yourself only was, for the purpose of the YouTube. That was the only reason I did it, and it was refused. But All right, and that was denied by a previous, by another judge, correct? Yes, because I couldn't prove it under civil procedure. However, um, I'm requesting and objecting right now because... My client has a presumption of innocence, which has been um, discouraged by showing him in prison clothes in front of a live audience of over maybe a million people. I don't know. But his presumption of innocence has been damaged because of this YouTube experience. All right, that's denied. Would my client sit in the jury box so he wouldn't be in front of the YouTube? I mean, we're here on a, a motion, so he's here. Or either he can sit at the table. He can either sit at the council table or he can stand here. He can sit at the council table. Then. All right, so you all go back and sit at council table.
All right. And off the record for a moment. And Vashon, that other person is coming back, correct? Judge, I told her to. She got it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Because there's somebody who's going to come down to speak with her. All right. We're back on the record. So state, you've had a chance to review this motion. Yes. All right. State, do you have any motions that have been filed under seal? Your Honor, the district attorney's office, we have not filed anything under seal. I cannot speak to whether there was maybe an outside party who was complying with the subpoena for the defense that sent out, but nothing as far as um, the state of Texas in our capacity from the district attorney's office has been filed under seal. All right, so defense, who has filed motions under seal? I don't know, Your Honor. I'm, I, only, I only have access to the, um, the public computer that the rest of the public has, off, has access to. It shows a sealed two sealed documents with different numbers attached to them on October 31st. It includes also two sealed motions. Now it's my understanding that uh, my co-counsel, Ms. Efron, filed motions for uh, payments for mitigation Is experts. Is there a microphone on? I think. I'm sorry. There's a little bit of distraction. I, I didn't hear the name, Ms. Hoon. Does that work, Ms. Carrera? You have to. Oh, when I'm talking. Okay. I, I didn't hear the name okay. of the person you said, co counsel. There are, my co counsel is. It's on. For more to turn it on. Oh, it's a state on? Okay. My co counsel is Lorraine Efron, and she filed motions, I know, for uh, fees for the various people that are attached to our case. Um, and and so, really sure uh, just one October second. Thirty-first. Just one second. So, let's start with this first one you're talking about, October first, two thousand twenty-three. Is that a motion that the defense filed that you want unsealed? Not necessarily. You might found out it's an it, it is a defense. Unfortunately, Your Honor, what we received on the computer, and I made copies for myself, not for anybody else. But when I received on the computer, no mentions a motion and order filed. I don't know who files it. Uh, we don't always know. Miss um, Miss Mitchell uh, has been helpful as much as she can be, but I'm not sure. The reason for this um, particular motion for to open unsealed was because of when the plea was entered. No, no, no. Let me stop you. This is my question. So October 31st, 2023, are you asking that that motion, whatever it be, even if it's a motion that was filed by the defense for your expert or whatever, you want it unsealed? Yes, Your Honor. State, do you have any objection to unsealing a motion that was filed on October 31st? No. And to the clerk, are you able to look and see who filed that motion? No, Judge. Only my supervisors. Okay. I don't have access to sealed motions. All right. November 1st, 2023. State, is that your motion? Sealed motion order. I don't know what it is. No, that was not our motion. Okay. November 15th, 2023. State, is that your motion? No, Your Honor. November 16th, 2023. Is that your motion? No, Your Honor. November 22nd, 2023. State, is that your motion? No, All right. And what other dates on here? Because you mentioned any other dates unknown to movement. movement. Well, I have the, at my wherefore paragraph any other motions and orders in the interest of justice that are under seal. The reason for this is because during the plea of Katrina Mendoza, the co-defendant, on August 7th, after she entered her plea, you turned off the YouTube and you had a private conference with the defense counsel and state, and there's no record of it. And so I'm wondering, is there mo an order there somewhere? I don't know. I don't know what happened in that in that conference. Um, YouTube was turned on again when your conference was over, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know what went on with it. Well, if people would have been in courtroom that day, they probably would have heard what went on, but you're asking for any other dates unknown to movement. You, you are not asking for orders for the any other dates, or are you? I unseal any and all documents, motions, and orders in the interest of justice. All right. So... What I will do, state, if you have no objections, I will grant the motion to unseal the motions that she's asking to be unsealed. 
and I'll do an in-camera inspection because I don't know what these motions were sealed as to. I don't know if it's something that everyone is supposed to see or not, I because see. I don't know what it is. Your Honor, I, I just pulled up the co-defendants, cause number 2022CR. 4248B. And it looks like a lot of the dates she listed do correspond to what appears to be sealed motions in that case. So perhaps she's referring to, um, I believe the de defense counsel is Todd McRae. I don't know if he needs to be here. Yes, he would need to be here. If these are motions that you're asking to be unsealed and they're in the co-defendant's case and it's motions that that defense attorney has filed on behalf of their client, you may not be entitled to have those motions unsealed. Is that a ruling, Your Honor, or are we going to have another hearing on this? Oh, we're going to have a hearing, and, and uh, Mr. McRae will be here. And Mr. Okay. McRae may have an objection to the unsealing of motions that were filed in his case, perhaps by him, perhaps by the state. So this is the court's ruling. With regards to the October 31st, 2023, November 1st, 2023, November 15, 2023, November 16, 2023, and November 22nd, 2023, and any other dates unknown to the movement. Court is rescinding any rulings that were made previously because the court assumed that these were documents that were filed in your client's cause number and not the co defendant's cause number. So, what will end up happening is the attorney. In that case, we'll be here and that attorney can raise objections if he so choose to having documents that he may have filed on behalf of his client and their cause number. What I was quoting you was all their cause number. It's the same cause number, it's just an A or B difference. No, but here's the thing. If that defense attorney, Mr. McRae, filed sealed motions for his client, it may be experts for his clients, and he may not want those unsealed. And the question becomes whether or not you are allowed to unseal or have unsealed sealed motions that he has filed that, for example, if he hired an expert for his client and he does not want the state or you to know what the findings are of his experts, he has the right to keep that sealed. So he needs to be here to see if he has any objection. And I made my ru ruling previously thinking that these dates were dates that were under your cause number, but the state is telling me that these are dates under the co-defendant's cause numbers and not your own. That's true. Oh. Well, then Mr. McCray needs to be here. Pro probably for the next one as well. I'm asking a copy of, for a copy of the PSI for Katrina Mendoza. No, with regards to the PSI, Mr. McCray has no ability to object to your seeing the co-defendant's PSI. That is an order that you need to have her to see if probation will allow you to view that. I have to file another motion in order on yes. that? Yes. Thank you. The other thing I'm asking for is a transcript of the witnesses that the state intends to call at time of trial. What transcript? Transcripts of, their, of the statements. The child who was uh, a sister of our deceased Mercedes Lasoya is listed as a witness. Well, we'd if like they, if that, we'd like her a transcript of that, as well as anybody else, they're going to call as a witness. When you they say transcript, was there a testimony? Are you talking about them statements. speaking to the police? Vol voluntary statements. All right. If they have statements, it should be in your discovery. It's not this, it's, we are, did not get a copy at all of Jordan, young Jordan. She's a, she was six years old at the time. I mean, she's about eight now. It's a forensic interview, Your Honor. The disc has been in the file. The state has given defense counsel act. Actually, I brought the file down to court for multiple days for defense counsel to view with a, with a separate clean computer. It's, yes. We've made it accessible. But, yes, technically they did, Your Honor, along with 3,000 plus other issues of discovery. Um, personally, I put in close to $200, 200 hours out of court, just me. Lorraine has, Lorraine Efron has a whole nother bunch of, of hours. Out of that, 
I would like to request a transcript of Jordan's, rather than just her testimony, a transcript of it. Voluntary All right. So let me ask you this. This statement, was this statement made, this alleged statement, was it made in English? It's made in English. Yes. All right. Then you all need to view it. The state, the state has given you opportunity to view it. I know that in this court, and if I'm wrong, correct me. I think during the holiday, I want to say November Thanksgiving, I had the deputies have your client brought over and for you all to watch the video. So I'm mm -hmm. not ordering them to make to transcribe a video. You need to watch it with your client. Mm -hmm. And the yep. court has made the courtroom accessible for you all to do that. I'm not going to order them to have somebody transcribe a video that is in English. Your Honor, excuse me, but um, we were never presented in court. And I thank you for the time you did give us. But for over 3,000 bits of discovery, which is a two inch, it's two inches thick. When we ultimately file our 3914 motion, when we ultimately file, it's about two inches thick. We did get to see videos. We got to see certain statements. We never got to see Jordan's. We have to go to the office to see that. And, it's, and it, I'm requesting an actual transcript of her voluntary All right, statement. that's going to be denied for them to do a transcript. Uh, Deputy, Lord Deputy Mejia, is he able to come over here Wednesday to view a video? They will bring him over Wednesday to view a video. Of, of Jordan. Uh, there's multiple. I can bring them all over. All right. In particular, that one. She just wants Jordan's. Okay. Is that correct? That's that's fine. I've no, no, no. had an opportunity to view the statements. Now, my question is, do you just want them to bring Jordan's statement over? That's fine. Yes, Your Honor. All right. So she just wants Jordan. Okay. And Mr. Ruiz will bring you back Wednesday and you can see the video. Your Honor, I have two other things that are, are not. One of them is from an order that Judge Harl granted back on August 28th. It was about the medical examiner. Um, she was subpoenaed pursuant to that order to be here on a given date, and she didn't show up. Um, she had some other reason. Um, there, there, she sent instead a pile about an inch thick of papers that weren't sealed, weren't, weren't, excuse me, not sealed, but were not uh, attached with a rubber band. And when I was reviewing them, I realized there was no certification of uh, the records custodian as to the validity of those documents. So I would just, I'm gonna do myself with your permission, write a letter and ask for this custodian to send us another packet that has been notarized, um, if, if you're all right with that. Oh, I'm not in charge of, of that at all. Your Honor, I, I do have a, Brief response to that, just because um, Dr. Molina is, um, she's very responsible and she does stay on top of her things. She was in contact with me uh, that day, and um, she had prior obligations, but she did send her assistant with all of the documentation that they had. To, it was just a, a subpoena to bring documentation, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. um, they brought the, the documentation, and then when um, we were conferring um, just in court, that it, it was it was acknowledged that really they just need Dr. Molina for a 705 at trial. So that's why she did not appear. But we tried to do it beforehand in the interest of, of uh, economy of the court. Uh, even still, the fact that the documents were presented loose with no certification by the records custodian, how can we possibly use those records? I'm just asking that we get another copy certified by the records custodian before we go to trial. All right, I'm not going to to order that. If you all want something, you just pick up the phone, call the ME. You said you've already subpoenaed her in the records. Then that subpoena is still in place. Thank you. And one other thing, Your Honor, you referred, because um, I don't have, I wasn't in this case until a year after it began. And I would like to get a copy of judge's notes in the file with your permission. Sure. Here's the docket sheet. The notes are on there. And it's this it's record is public. As, excuse me, Your Honor. I don't believe it's the same as the actual notes that are in the file. The this is the entire file. This is the court's this file here. This is the court's file. I don't have anything else. You if it's not anything? in this file, it doesn't exist. There's nothing written in the file, in other words. It's all on the that. It's the pages. docket sheet. I write everything down on the docket sheet and any orders or motions or any 
letters that have been received by from the jail by your client. It's in here. This is the court's file. So if I can get a copy of that, you're talking about. Oh, we're not. Sheet. Here's the thing. This. We're not going to have the copy machine at back and use the copy machine for you to make copies on this. You're more than welcome to write down whatever you want to write down from it. You're more than welcome to do that. Can I send somebody to do that? Or can I send a, a records copier company to come and copy that? Here's the issue with that. This is a legal document. This document, this file, the custodian of this file, technically and legally, is the district clerk's office. So you would have to clear that with the district clerk off office if they would let some outside party come in take this file apart and get copies of it. But in there is the year before I was appointed. It has all the comments that the court made. Is that correct? What is in here is what is in here. February 7th was the arrest date. It's the date of Mercedes' death. I was appointed and actually activated in, in um, April, April 2nd. Um, there's that whole year took place. Lorraine was replaced by Debbie Burke, who was hired and then um, withdrew. Debbie was in, and Mrs. Burke was involved for nine months. I don't know what happened during that time. I don't know what orders the court made. I don't, I don't want to run afoul of anything. It is on the docket sheet and any motions that were filed that are not under seal are in this file. And anything, any orders that were heard are in this file. If it's not in this file, that means that it's not in this file and no order was heard. Okay, thank you. And can I have the same access to Katrina Mendoza's file? I'm not in charge. Technically, they're all the, technically here's records. the thing. And I want people to hear me clearly because maybe I'm not communicating properly. These files are the court's files. And when I say court's file, I don't mean they're Stephanie Boyd's files. I mean, these are the files to the 187 district court. The custodian over these files are the district clerk. If anybody wants some inside party to come in to copy the, this, this file, you need to speak to the district clerk about it and see whether or not they are allowed to come in to make a copy of the file. I am not the custodian of the records of the file. Do I write things in the file on the docket sheet? Yes, I do. But I'm not the custodian of records. So if you want to bring some third party in to make a copy of John Doe's file, Amy Doe's file, whoever it may be, that needs to be cleared with the district clerk's office because they are the custodian of records of these files. I am not. Okay. And what I can tell you is the normal practice in this court, if there is a hearing held, if I give a ruling on something, I write it on the docket sheet. That's where we are. That would be all. Thank you, Arms. All right. So, Miss. Ferguson. All right. We need another hearing. Date. Does anyone have any objection to the court calling Todd McRae? See if he answers so that we can have a setting on whether or not he has any objections to the motions in his client's case that were sealed being open or unsealed. I have no objection. I have no objection. All right. So we can go off the record. I don't know what happened with that phone call that Judge Boyd was just now about to make. They didn't say, so I don't know. But thank you guys so very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.